Cervantes, speculating on when the prophecies are to happen. Speculating on when prophecies would happen is not entirely without value. Remember that even Jesus Christ even advised us to know the signs of the times from the messages being told by credible Catholic mystics in our times. It is clear that prophecies, particularly the dire ones, are meant to either instruct or convert. Indeed, frightening prophecies are conditional depending on the response of the people. The prophecies of our lifetime, that is, prophecies to likely happen before we die, are clearly summed up in the Marian apparitions in Garabandal, Spain, from 1961 to 1965, the warning, the miracle, and the chastisement. And so it is understandable that, with at least one Garabandal seer telling us she would be alive to witness the warning, and even the miracle which is to happen later within a year. And gathering from the mystics, many who are now saints, I cannot but agree with many renowned Catholic researchers and writers that we are indeed in the times of tribulations leading to the warning. Such a conclusion is even more inevitable when the prophecies of the mystics are weaved together. Consider, for example, what Garen Bandal, visionary Jacinta, revealed during an interview in 1983, and note the reference to communism, whose stifling elements we are now experiencing more and more during the coronavirus virus. Question. On the two nights of screams, you saw visions of the future conditional chastisement that would come to mankind if we do not change after the warning and miracle. Did you also see the warning? Answer. I prefer not to speak about that subject. The Blessed Virgin didn't say we should speak about all the details of what was shown to us. I remember she said it was very important that we pray about all that. Question. My question is whether you actually saw the warning. I'm not asking you to reveal things that you are not supposed to speak about, but rather if you just actually saw it. Answer. I can't explain it very well. I remember that I was very afraid. It seemed as though it were both seeing it and being told about it. Also, everything got very dark. You can imagine how terrifying it was because we were still very much afraid, even though we were seeing the Virgin at the same time. Question. Did you see the visions of the communist tribulation that is to precede the warning? Answer. I don't know exactly. The Virgin said that we should pray much so that these things don't come. Question. Could you tell the difference between visions of the chastisement and visions of the warning or tribulation? Answer, yes. We could tell the difference because the chastisements were a far more fearful thing. Question, did you ever see anything that had to do with the Holy Father? Answer, no. But the Virgin said that in the future he was going to be in need of much prayer. Question, you have also said that when things were at their very worst, the warning would happen. How do you know this? Did the Virgin tell you? Or did you see it in a vision? The Virgin said that the warning would come when conditions were at their worst. It wouldn't be just the persecution either because many people will no longer be practicing their religion. Question. When the warning comes, it will be seen and felt by everyone on earth. Does this include little children who have not yet reached the age of reason? Answer, yes. That's why we felt sorry for them, because it was such a terrifying experience. Question, can you tell us anything about what the world will be like when the warning comes? Answer, bad. Question, many people believe that we are living in the age of the apocalypse. Did the Virgin ever speak to you about the end times or indicate that we are living in the latter times? Answer. I don't remember her saying the latter times, but I do remember her saying difficult times. Question. Did the Virgin ever use the word apocalypse? Answer. I don't remember now, but it's possible that she did. End of the interview. And there's St. Malachi's count of 112 more popes from his time in the 12th century. Note that Pope Francis, the current pontiff, 
does not seem to be included, an ominous hint of something unusual. I am citing here the last four popes. Although his list started from his time, the actual names of the popes were later supplied by his followers who found uncanny conformity with the saints, epigrammatic verse, and the popes who were later elected to head the Catholic Church. On the half-moon, John Paul I became Pope when the moon appeared exactly half-moon. It was in its warning phase. He died the following month. Soon after an eclipse of the moon, some say he was murdered. The labor of the sun. John Paul II, amazingly, John Paul II, was the only Pope who was born both on the day of an eclipse of the sun and entombed on the day when the sun was eclipsed. The glory of the olive. The olive is a part of the insignia of the Benedictine order. Benedict XVI, whose chosen name undoubtedly rhymes with the prophecy. Peter the Roman. The 112th prophecy states, in the final persecution of the Holy Roman Empire, there will reign Petrus Romanus, who will feed his flock amid many tribulations, after which the seven-hilled city will be destroyed and the dreadful judge will judge the people. So far, researchers are at a loss on how to attribute to Pope Francis the moniker Peter the Roman. Indeed, mystic priest Father Miguel Rodriguez explicitly said that Peter the Roman is yet to come, but with the caveat not to judge Francis, who he said would die a martyr along with Pope Emeritus.